Welcome to the instructional video series for the adjustable hip square. This is segment five of a six part series. In this segment, we're gonna learn how to transfer the layout from the plate lines or from the top of the walls to the hip and valley members along with the ridge. You can see all six segments of this instructional video series at our website, adjustablehipsquare.com. Okay, we're gonna begin by showing you how the hip rafter sits on the corner. And of course, this is my little demonstration piece that I showed you earlier where the uh, corner, I mean, the, the rafter is actually cut to kind of wrap around the corner. And I, I'm using this piece intentionally so that you can see exactly where the plane of the face of the rafter intersects with the wall, which is right here. And you can see our layout lines. And of course, from this intersection point to this first layout mark is 12 inches. To the other side is 13 and a half. Now, yours, yours may be any particular dimension. Ours just happened to fall at this dimension. It, it was not something done intentionally. And of course, I like to see my rafters oppose each other on either side of hip and valley. So this dimension from this corner and this dimension coming to this corner are the same thing. So um, if we now take our other uh, uh, hip rafter, our actual hip rafter, and set it in place, we'll show you how this works. Okay. Now this is going to be more like what you see, but you can still begin to understand exactly where this intersection point would be. So that's going to be our starting point for our layout. But there's our starting point that we just discovered. We're going to start there, and of course, to the side of our first uh, rafter was 12 inches. Of course, the rafter is an inch and a half in width, so we're going to mark the other side. I'm doing this for the benefit of the camera. I realize that most people will just simply put an X on one side of the line or the other, but in order to avoid confusion, we're going to continue to do this. Now, our layout is on 16 inches on center. Um, yours may be 24 on center. It may be a number of different things, but of course, the square represents 12 inches, so there's 12 inches there. There's, there's, well, let me make sure I did that correct. There's a spray mark there, okay. There's 12 inches there, another four, and one and a half, and there's our 16 inch layoff. So we're going to continue this all the way to the top. Okay, there's another 12 inch mark. There's a four inch mark and a five and a half to show you the full dimension of the rafter. Now, there's 12, and of course we don't quite have 16. Actually, we've got uh, 15 and mm, not quite a quarter remaining. And I want to demonstrate for you too as well how this can translate and continue that layout onto the rig. So we'll demonstrate that next. Okay, the place I just showed you on the uh, mock structure is right here at this corner. So this is the hip rafter that we were placing the layout on. And when we got to the top, uh, the, the remainder from the, from the last uh, layout point to this corner was 15, a, a little less than 15 and a quarter. And what I want to show you is how you can continue that layout on across this uh, ridge member here, which is ridge member H, which is three feet in length. So let, let's take a close up view and take a look at exactly how that's going to work. This is uh, hip rafter A, and of course we were laying out this face. And from our last layout mark, to our next layout line leaves us, uh, we don't have the full dimension of the face of the uh, jack rafter on that member. We actually only have uh, a little less than three quarters of an inch. We would continue that layout from here on over to this point, which would give us three quarters of an inch there, and we can continue our layout uh, across the uh, ridge member. And of course, that would that's just a common rule measurement that you would see anywhere else. like so. But you can see the benefits of being able to do all of this from the ground without actually having to do it up in the air. Alley rafter E from our uh, mock structure plan and the distance or the dimension from where the face of the uh, hip rafter, I mean the valley rafter, excuse me, intersects with the outer corner is 10 and 1 half inches and the other face of the common rafter is 12. Now, it does not matter 
which of the two heel cuts that we used, whether the rafter is set in a position to plane with the top edge or whether it's set down and dropped, as I refer to it, um, it, it would uh, be the same. So let's demonstrate exactly how it works, knowing that our first dimension to our first common rafter is 10 and a half. Connecting point with the face of the, uh, the valley rafter uh, to the edge of the top plate is right here. Very easy to see. Our number was 10 and a half. Now, uh, that rafter is the actual, the, the subsequent or the next rafter in the line. We would need to go back the other direction. So uh, 10 and a half from 16 inches would give us five and a half inches. And our other face would be four. And that's our first rafter as it falls on this hip member. So where on the uh, hip, uh, this excuse me, valley member, on the hip member, you use the actual dimension. On this uh, member, you subtract that from 16 and, and, and transfer that up the face of the um, valley member to establish your next uh, placement. Now, of course, there's 12 inches more. And there's four, which would be our next rafter and make sure I did that correctly. Yep, there's four. So that means that our next placement is right there. And we'll continue this all the way to the top as we've demonstrated before. There's 12, there's four, and there's five and a half. Now, we're going to move next to see exactly how these layouts correspond with the common and jack rafters.